I'm going to send them into a second life. And then watch what happens. There's a 70% chance they will turn into passives. Because of that, they are mitigating the healing Nick would have got. And the hey, welcome back to the channel. All right. I got all the way up to 22 on the leaderboards in this masochism meta beta for battlegrounds. And it's for a variety of reasons, but I in no way would ever try to allow myself to think that I'm as good a player as Happy McMuffin. This happened because I had a strategy, I stuck to it, and because I have a large roster. Now, why am I telling you this? What am I showing you? It's because I never refreshed a champion. That's actually not true. I refreshed one champion once. I refreshed America Chavez on accident. And I did that for a variety of reasons, but one of the biggest reasons was because I wanted to test stuff out. I was having so much fun, and there was these champions I thought could be good, and I'm gonna show you four of them today that dramatically surpassed my expectations. And the really cool thing, and part of why I love Battlegrounds is, they're just not good for Battlegrounds. I think they're gonna be good in War, AQ, General Questing. This game is so big and so complex that niche is no longer a terrible thing because niches are getting really big because the game is so big. I can't wait to show you these four champions. Let's check this out. All right, and now I know the biggest, the flashiest one. It's Black Cat. I mean, this is gonna be awesome. You're gonna see some melting happen here. Uh, what's really relevant here in these specific fights, you can do a lot more than this, but what's relevant here is this always active, Black Hat's critical hits are gonna flick this debuff, okay? This bleed debuff, keep that in mind. Now there's the heist, if you're familiar with her, this is uh, kind of like her mini game within the game. I got, thank you Campo for that idea. But if the calling card, which is what you're passing back and forth, is on the opponent and converts into a sabotage debuff, reducing the opponent's defensive ability accuracy by 40% and dealing that's not a that's not a nothing amount of damage. 2,675 direct damage whenever their defensive abilities fail to trigger. Now it's only 40%, uh, but when you combine that with this bud, uh, bad luck aura, uh, you can get that up to 60%, which provides you that 100% defensive ability actually re uh, re reduction. So every time that happens, every time the ability fails, is going to deal this 2067 damage. And then the other really important part of this here is that Black Cat pauses each of her personal passes and debuffs for 1.8 seconds whenever that happens. That's how you, you can keep it going. As you get skilled, you can really keep that going. And then the special two during this attack, Black Cat's critical rating is increased by 22.2 uh, for each hit in the combos. Champion's combo meter is fine. Instead of her regular bleeds, this attack inflicts critical bleeds, dealing uh, a large amount of damage, right? Okay, I want to show you this. Check this out. We're gonna show you one where I play pretty well and just melt the opponent. One where I, I don't play it as well, you're still gonna see some melt. All right. Now we've talked about this, right? Uh, this is that kind of mini card game that I was telling you about. It, it, it's important and you're gonna see we're trying to switch that card back and forth. It's the, uh, well, it looks like a card kind of passive. It's got a three on it underneath Black Cat right now. And what I'm really doing is I'm just trying to transfer that back and forth, right? That's uh, amp ramping me up, getting that going. And then at some point, I'm going to throw that special two. We talked about it. I want to get the Sabotage debuff on Immortal Abomination. Now, this is Immortal Abomination. He's a problem in uh, in Battlegrounds. He's great two ways, attacker and defender. He's a big, big, beefy boy, right? And also, you're like, isn't he going to be putting on these poison debuffs on you every time? He makes contact, keep that in mind, keep that in mind. All right, now, uh, he's still got a big, decent amount of health left. We're going in, we're gonna throw our special two. Here it comes, transfer the card over or it becomes a sabotage debuff. That already does a lot of damage. We talked about the SP2 doing those crit bleeds. And then look, every time I hit him, he just, if that, oh man, that could have gone on longer if he had more health. If he had more health, that would have gone on longer and we would have kept everything pause because his defensive ability accuracy was failing, meaning we're going to pause all of our great stuff and do massive damage to him every time those abilities fail. i sorry that was so quick, but that's just what she can do. It's not just against thing. Anytime and a defensive ability accuracy can fail. Now, I think we're going to see one more fight. Now, I played really well in that one against Immortal Abomination. I want to show you one where I don't play as well. I don't know the spacing as well. For whatever reason, uh, it felt very intuitive, let's call it, against that Immortal Abomination, against Immortal Hulk, it didn't feel. And I know I'm gonna make some mistakes, but I want you to see, especially because that happens so quickly. And also Immortal Abomination has a chance to poison anytime there's contact. I, I believe that's what was happening there. It was not just masochism. 
So now here you can see I'm transferring the card back and forth. I, you know, if as this game moves on and progresses, I don't think this is like elite gameplay stuff. Like, you know, we thought of Tyre when she first came out. I think a lot of you can do this if you just get used to it, right? So you can see I got the spacing there. I'm able to punish uh, his heavy with my heavy. We're moving that card back and forth. I, I know I make a mistake at some point, but we're getting our ramp going here. And this is Immortal Hulk. Now, ideally, I would have gotten um, the sabotage debuff on him and then hopefully maybe even canceled out his immortal stage. I know that gets a little bit tricky there with a variety of things, but it would have been nice. So here we go. I'm just kind of getting this going. I'm punishing uh, him in the corner. And uh, in a few seconds here, I think we're going to transfer the card over one more time. Yeah, so it's on me. Throw the special two. And then you see the big bleeds that are coming out. That's a lot of big red numbers, the critical bleeds. And here we go. So it's some of that's gonna get paused because of masochism, masochism is not kicking in. But you see right there, I'm hitting into his block and it's not doing as much damage and it's not pausing the sabotage like it did with Immortal Abomination. Now, I think I made a big mistake there in the SP1. I should have continued on and tried to get to the SP2 and I think this fight probably would have been over. But you saw how much damage she did and if you play better than I played, this fight would have already been over. You can see I made a little mistake there. And also, I think she's got some value on defense. It's tough for me to say for sure because she's new. So some of them might just be like, we're not used to her animations, but she did okay on defense for me. She did okay. Mainly I ended up using her for this immense damage. Uh, and she did really, really good for me. I was very, very satisfied with her. And then again, you can take that and do that. That damage is immense. And you can take that into any other sort of questing against defenders who have this uh, ability that can happen frequently like that. And you can fail that or take that into notes. Masochism right here. Now, okay, Captain Britain, I like to call her Betsy. The signature ability, it is gonna show up in the fight. Uh, whenever a debuff is purified, gain a bulwark, passive increasing block proficiency. You see that by the numbers, it's a sizable bulwark. Now, what we're really gonna be showing in this fight though is this purification. She just punishes this, it ramps her up quite a bit. You're gonna see the close here, right? Uh, but whenever sign up mode is activated, deactivate Captain Britain will purify all exhaustion, slow and weakness debuffs on the opponent. That's something she will be putting on them when she is in the psionic mode. We'll kind of talk about that in the fight itself. The important part here is whenever a debuff is purified off the opponent, give it an indefinite passive prowess. So if you're gonna get these prowesses, they are uh, passive, increasing special attack damage by 10%, maxing out at 25%. Notice she doesn't lose them, meaning this ramp is just gonna continue to go. And then the special attack two is gonna increase attack rating by 359 per unique buff currently on Captain Britain. When those buffs start to add up, that's not a bad attack increase. And you're gonna see how this turns out and how much she punishes those who choose to purify her debuffs. Now we're going in, we saw Betsy Braddock, we talked about her. No, I just wanna address it right in the beginning. I don't think she's a good defender, but that's okay. That's not what this is about. We're showing some offensive views. Now it's anytime someone's purifying, right? Well, Nick can purify some stuff, but really we're talking about the masochism here. Remember, I think that's only every seven to eight seconds. So it's going on cooldown. So her ramp could be even faster if uh, there was more purifying going on. Notice every time uh, the debuff is purified. So watch, uh, we'll probably land a parry here. I know I was trying to avoid Nick's SP1. We threw our special that does enter us into psionic mode, which means when we're hitting him, uh, there will be various debuffs that are landed and those are causing the buffs on us. This isn't meant to be an in-depth Betsy guide. I do have a video on that. I'll link that in the description. Maybe even put up a card right here. We'll see uh, that you can take a look at it. I like this champion. I think she can help you out a lot. And I know right now you're thinking like, all right, dude, I mean, this is pretty cool, but um, you know, <laughs> what are you gonna do? The pause trick? Uh, that 1% with, with Nick Fury, and uh, you're just gonna pause it and you're gonna be like, hey, wow, look at Betsy, she's amazing. No, we're not gonna do that, folks. All right, look at this prowess. We're already up to 6% or six of them. Uh, you can see the bulwark, we talked about that. Look how little damage we're taking on the block because of that bulwark. And I think this Betsy's like 660, 680, something like that. Pulled her more times than I wish. Now, there's 37 seconds left in this fight. There's no way I'm gonna win this, right? He's not even in his second life. He's just not like, dude, why are you showing this to us? Obviously, you know the answer. So uh, look at that SB2 still. I mean, that's that's respectable. That's respectable, that's respectable. She's a bit of a ramp champ though. There's only 20 seconds left in this fight. Like, come on, Vega, like, oh, there's no way she's going to end this. I mean, he's even getting the heal back from masochism. Notice we're up to 11 prowess now. Take a look at this deliciousness.
Look at this clothes from Betsy. No, I like that. A champion who's got that beautiful, beautiful uh, bulwark, not taking that much damage, punishing when champions are purifying my debuffs, which is including parry stun. And then, yeah, maybe the fight takes a, you know, I don't even know. I don't even think that took that long. We actually killed both of his lives. That's how big her damage was getting. What did we say? We we're only at 11 prowess. You can take that. Defenders, nodes, where purification is happening. And then there's a significantly more to her, her, her kit. I like Betsy, underrated menace in my opinion. That's right, America Chavez. I know some of you are gonna be like, dude, I thought you think she's in the cult here. I do, and I really hope she gets buffed. I think she could be and be an amazing champion without being an overpowered champion. But I wanna show you right now, we're just talking about a few things, right? It, that can, you can use, and if you wanna use her in Battleground, she's an excellent defender in Battlegrounds. Uh, but she can do things offensively, and I want to show you what you could probably use in Battlegrounds and maybe even in questing or AQ or what have you, okay? So some of it is her signature ability. If at least three unique dimensions are active, America Chavez becomes supercharged, granting the following bonuses. Uh, you see that launching the special two attack, but the important thing here is that there's a percentage plus to the dimensional energy infusion potency. Basically, just keep in mind that what I'm about to show you gets stronger. My America Chavez thing is a SIG 140, so we're getting close to that 50%. Now we'll scroll on down and you can see the dimensional energy infusion. This is the thing that's getting stronger as a max of nine stacks for each unique parallel dimension. I'll explain that, it'll be quick. Uh, and each buff on the opponent, she's gonna gain 862 attack. This is a rank four, so not quite that high. And then plus that energy resistance, but she's gaining some nice attack. You're gonna see we're gonna end this fight with a heavy of about 14K. Not bad, not bad at all. Uh, and then here is these dimensional, uh, parallel dimensions. You can see them. I'm not, again, this isn't America Chavez video, but you'll see I'm gonna try to get all three up when we throw our SB3. We wit get all three up, and then you're gonna see that dimensional energy infusion, all these things kind of coming together for a really, really nice package. Check it out. Okay, America Chavez. Now, you're gonna see me make a couple mistakes. I don't play the uh, the miss very well. And as we talked about, you wanna get all those parallel dimensions going or all those dimensions going. One of the ways you do it is she does have a nice passive stun on heavy. There is the bankings of a great kit in this champion. If she gets the right tweaks and a buff, she'd be very good and someone you're really wanting to use. So why am I showing you this? She's two way, she's good here, two ways, man. Uh, she's a, a troubling defender, right? No one really likes going against her if you can avoid it. But also, watch what's going to happen here. So when you let the heavy uh, finish all the way, it triggers basically, let's just call it like the power, uh, for lack of a better term at the moment, dimension. You can see it. it's for the passive in the right hand corner. And what that does is that will eventually start reversing or mitigating power gain, which Super Scroll has. We've thrown our SP3, which will trigger all three of our parallel dimensions which remember that also increases our damage when you have all three of them going. So there we go. Uh, so we're gonna evade this and then look at his power gain. He's got a power gain, he should be gaining power. But look at that, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening and uh, maybe it's right here. We'll get to the point where we actually start to reverse it. Yeah, look, his power is actually, just, it's, it's incremental, it's slow, but it's actually going down. We have turned off part of what makes this hard. I didn't get the chance to fight a Hyperion, but I know Slaymon on the rankings team, check out his channel has been using America Chavez as a great defender and also to beat up Hyperions. Also, and I wanna point this out because we talked about the ramping damage as she gets those dimensions going and there's bust on the defender. I think there's only 30 seconds uh, left. He had around 50% health and we're gonna finish this fight. We're gonna finish this fight when it's gonna include me making a mistake. I tried, I'm gonna try to punish one of his special ones a little too early. So he's at 30% health, there's 14 seconds left. Uh, none of those are critting. Man, if her crit rate was a little bit better, oof. All right, five seconds left, right? No way you're gonna win this. Come in, heavy, takes care of it. Menacing defender, handles power gain. You can use that in Battlegrounds, but you can use that elsewhere, right? She can do things and she can heal too. Keep that in mind. I like, I like the character. All right, this beautiful creature, Toad. <laughs> you're gonna be impressed with what he does. He's also a tough defender in this. You really wanna make sure you're taking in the correct uh, attacker and know how to play him. Now, what's relevant for this video though, what I think you can take further and, and do some investigation on Toad is you are gonna see his signature ability come into play a little bit. He's gonna gain the indefinite uh, passive prowess 
increasing special damage by five to 25 percent my toad is a low sig i think he's sig one so five percent when a personal stun or poison or the stun from the Master is purified. Okay, so keep that in mind. And then let's go ahead and take a look at this. Tongue attacks, um, which are his second medium, special one and special two attacks, and they inflict a paralytic poison debuff. We've already talked about happens, right? Uh, when those are purified. And then the paralytic poison deals 2,714 damage over 30 seconds and reduces health recovery by 30%. Uh, the defender or whoever is fighting can um, remove them by dashing forward and backward. You can see there is a cooldown on that. Here's the really cool thing, though. I mean, the, the whole thing's cool, but what you're going to show you here against Nick Fury is there's a 70% chance to inflict a paralytic poison passive, and you see that it reduces healing, plus it's doing the damage, when purified by a skilled champion. I'm going to show you this against Fury, and then we're going to take a look against a Mole Man, too. So you see... This isn't some one trick pony. This is someone who you, you want to use and you can take this into questing in other places. It's really, really cool. All right, my boy Toad. Oh, I love this champion so much. Uh, I think he's a, the definition of that line between niche and specialized. He's fantastic at it, right? So we talked about this. Now this is the masochism uh, meta, which is helping out a little bit here in some ways. In some ways it's actually hurting. I'll we'll, we'll show you why. But you can see all those tongue attacks, right? We talked about it's the second medium, it's the specials, they are landing those poisons for us. So here, we're gonna land another one, right? And uh, what did we see? It was a 70% chance when they're purified by a skill attacker, they turn into those passives. So you're still like, yeah, that's great, man, but uh, how is this going to help you? Now, keep this in mind. When Fury goes into his second life, he purifies any debuffs or passes on him and they all go away. But Toad, and this is tricky. I didn't, I didn't see this in the very beginning. If he's got those uh, debuffs on, he will, they will be purified. But they will be turned into passives. Watch this. There's seven debuffs. You want as many debuffs as you can get. I want to send him into a second life, and then watch what happens. There's a seventy percent chance they will turn into passives because of that. They are mitigating the healing Nick would have got, and the damage from them stays on too. Toad. Oh, dude, he's disgusting. He's disgustingly beautiful, right? And look how quick that was. And we actually finished the full Nick. We didn't have to do the 1% trick or anything like that. I actually got to play the game and enjoy it. There are nodes, there are defenders where this will be to your benefit. Look, so uh, yeah, masochism will, I guess, in theory, help us out a little bit. But watch this. This is against Mole Man. This is a beefy, beefy Mole Look at it. He's on that giganto cutie, as, as, as Nick, uh, as Nerd likes to call him. So we're gonna, again, we're gonna go in, I'm just gonna be landing my poisons. I'm gonna throw my special one, which is gonna get me a nice heal and get my prowess up. Toad's actually pretty uh, recoil tree friendly too. I remembered in the in my initial thoughts on him, I thought like, you're probably gonna wanna recoil, but like, I mean, this is enough damage for Battlegrounds. This is enough damage for Battlegrounds. And uh, with these heals that he's getting, yeah. so, okay, so the fight takes him 30, 40 seconds in questing or something like that. I don't know. So here we go, you can see this. Uh, the purification from Mole Man isn't really that big of an issue. We're doing plenty, plenty of damage because there's a 7% chance when those are purified, they're just gonna be turned into a passive anyway. And you see, what is that ticking for? They are ticking for 1,183. That's uh, pretty good. We're gonna come in, we're gonna throw our special two. I don't think this ends it, does it? Yeah, wow, it does. It does. Uh, Toad is a menace. He is an absolute menace. He won me fights on defense. He won me fights on offense. And I think he won me just matchups because he made my opponent have to think about what they were going to potentially do. I am sure, I'm positive, I didn't have access to what they were thinking, but I know that he was someone that they were looking at and they're like, well, I don't know how to handle this guy. And then they would place a Nick Fury or a Mole Man and Toad would absolutely destroy them, or they wouldn't place a defender like that where I wanted to use Toad, so I placed Toad as a defender, and Toad just eats their lunch. <laughs> He's disgustingly beautiful. I hope this was helpful. I wanna get out so many more. I love this mode for a variety of reasons, but you already know that. Let me know who else you had. You're like, hey, dude, you know what? This is underrated. A lot of you have been putting that on the tier list. Thank you, and I will continue to update that. 
as uh, you know, as we go through different betas and uh, through different node combinations, and then I think I'm probably gonna do it monthly once Battlegrounds is live because we can all learn so much from that. Like I've had America Chavez and she was a massive disappointment for me, but now I've played her in Battlegrounds and I, I still don't think she's this amazing champion, but I'm like, there's uses, there's uses. Betsy, I saw the uses, but Battlegrounds was pointing out to me, hey, here's some other places. And these are just parts of their kit. These weren't full reviews. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. I'm always, always, always curious about that and making sure I read the comments. Take care. I hope you either learned something, were entertained, or even better, a little bit of both. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.